A quick note. Feminists do not hate men. Men can also be feminists who believe in equality. Anyway, so the book that I have picked up for this week is Reading Lolita in Tehran, a memoir in books by Azhar Nafisi, published in 2003. But before we begin, I would like to make an announcement and this is very exciting. There is new and fresh content in my blog, unstoppablebrowngirl.in and uh, every Wednesday and Fridays I will be posting uh, write-ups there regarding books, regarding my feelings and I hope that you check it out. Also follow my Instagram and Facebook pages and links so that you are updated about my posts uh, on YouTube as well as on my blog. So let's get started. So this is a memoir written by uh, Azhar Nafisi. She is a professor of literature and uh, to be honest if you're not uh, not an avid reader and you're, you don't have much idea about the popular or canonical writers of English literature then I'm I am doubtful that you will get a lot of the references from the book although it's not very difficult even if you haven't read those books uh, that's okay because she uh, mentions these books frequently and she discusses them in depth so the title of this memoir reading Lolita in Tehran contains the name of a very famous as well as scandalous book Lolita which was written by Vladimir Nebovok and it was published in 1955. So when Lolita was published in 1955, uh, there was a huge uproar and people were really scandalized by this book. Why? Because the main theme of this book was pedophilia. Although there are a lot of layers to the book, it had a very prominent, uh, it had a theme of pedophilia, which is a psychiatric disorder where an elderly person is sexually attracted to a child, to a prepubescent child. Uh, and because it had this taboo uh, topic, the theme of the book was so scandalous that it was banned in a lot of countries and he was actually very much criticized. So in the book that we are discussing today, uh, the memoir by Nafisi, the title itself holds uh, the title of this very scandalous book, Reading Lolita in Tehran. So as a literature student herself, as a literature professor, she talks about her journey of reading a book as scandalous as uh, Vladimir's uh, Lolita in a hyper-masculine, hyper-Islamic state of Iran in the 1980s. So Nafisi, through books and literature, she also takes us on the journey of uh, the political journey of Iran uh, in those days, in the late uh, 20th century. And she also talks about the shift and change in the status of women in Iran. So the first thing that is very prominent in this novel is the transition of the political scenario in Iran. So to give you a little historical context of Iran. Mohammad Reza Shah succeeded his father to the throne in 1941 and ruled Iran until his overthrow in 1978. Although many acknowledge him for his efforts to industrialize and modernize the nation, his rule was both dictatorial and oppressive and thus fomenting opposition from a wide spectrum of the religious and secular populations. And here his chief critic was Shia scholar Ayatollah Khomeini. So there were these constant wars and political rivalries which uh, later led to, ultimately led to the rise of the Islamic power. So during Reza's rule, the women were not required to wear hijabs, at, uh, at least not. it was not mandatory, they were not meant to wear robes. Uh, but after the Islamic Republican Party was uh, in power, it was mandatory for women to uh, veil themselves. Uh, and all of a sudden, when you put these kind of rules and make it uh, mandatory, it's very difficult for people to get used to and especially for women when you are asked. Of course, it's a different thing when it is something that you're doing out of 
uh, your faith or your religion uh, when you believe that and it's a totally another thing when it's made mandatory for women to actually be robed and to be veiled so this this is a, another very important thing that you see in nafisi's novel and in fact it's quite interesting to note that she was so uh, she was so offended by this regressive law that she refused to wear her veil and uh, she, and she had actually quit her job but also like later on she accepted the fact that that was the truth that was the reality of women in uh, iran it is not the veil if you see it is only as a piece of cloth you might say that oh god it's just a piece of cloth why don't you just wear it and like deal with it but to be honest this is it's not just a piece of cloth of course if you want to wear it if the people if the women want to wear it that's totally fine it's cool but if you are making it a compulsion it actually goes against the freedom of people you are telling people what to wear and it's not only the clothes it goes beyond that it's patriarchy it's sexism it's misogyny you cannot overlook these facts why are only women controlled their education their choices why are they always questioned and why do they need to justify their choices so the next beautiful thing in this novel is nafisi's relationship with her students so of course nafisi she is a literature professor and after she quit her job uh, she started taking classes of uh, sort of tuitions uh, basically they were reading groups uh, and few of her selected students could attend it and uh, she discussed these uh, novels and uh, especially nobov vladimir's uh, <laughs> vladimir's lolita so the interesting thing and the very complex and intricate issue here that she points out nafisi points out is that of course she was born uh, in an era where women were not uh, were restricted and then comes her students who were born into this regime who don't know what uh, not wearing a hijab is though they, who don't know that it can even be an option so it's very interesting and beautiful to see their relationship that she nurtures with her students and the understanding so of course the, her students they vary in uh, age as well as uh, economic background and their relationship with their family so every student the 7 to 8 students that she had um had a had her own identity and story to tell and that's a very interesting thing that she explores in this novel the lives of these young women who some of them are very afraid to take a step forward some of them have most of them had lied to their family to come join this uh lecture this tuition classes in uh, nafisi's home every every once a week so it's very interesting to notice that there is a professor who had quit her job because she did not want to uh, give up her freedom who did not want to wear a hijab because she did not want to that's it like she just didn't want to and the regime was forcing her to do it but it's funny how you see that because she did not want to give that up she had to be now homebound because if she goes outside of her home she has to wear a hijab and of course at that point of time she raised her two children and uh, raised a happy family but and again she did go back to working in the university but the all i'm saying is that it's a very interesting take on freedom on religion and on the status of women she writes about the oppressive rule of the regime and she talks about virginity tests on women and how they were tortured women were tortured in the regime and here i'm going to quote uh, something so she writes the streets have been turned into a war zone where young women who disobey rules are hurled into petrol cars flogged and fined to be honest at some level i can actually relate to nafisi's writings of these political protests and uh, the chaos actually especially it's very sad to actually even admit 
and i'm afraid to admit that our country has come to a point where protesters where students where activists intellectuals poets writers professors are jailed for voicing their opinions our internet is uh, shut off whenever there is a protest and that's not what a democracy actually stands for of course i was not in iran in the 1980s i am not in iran in the in the 2021 but i am here in my own country and i know what's going on and how people are being silenced so of course nafisi's book deals with this trauma the anxiety of living in a war torn zone where there are bombs and attacks where there are shootings and killings of people just in front of you without a second thought to be honest i could not go in depth of the political scenario and the trauma that uh, nafisi writes about in this book in this memoir but uh, i would only like to tell you that it's a book worth reading so you can check it out i will leave a link in the description box below uh, know about the political scenario of iran know about the war the, about the people what they actually have to say and not only the headlines of the newspapers sometimes i feel literature that's why we need literature in our lives to know the story of the people it is not <laughs> about the headlines and the media these stories are from people what they have experienced and um, yeah so thank you for watching till the end hope to see you next week